Hello everyone, this is Alan from Technology Moments and welcome to this very simple video in which I'm gonna explain to you the basics behind Unify and how devices are managed and configured from scratch so you might understand why these unified networks have had such a tremendous acceptance among IT professionals and managers around the world. You will understand how it works, you'll be able to tell if Unify is the right choice for you and if you already have bought one of these, you'll pass on to our videos on how to configure and optimize these devices. Thanks to Unify, enterprise networking has never been easier to manage and home networking configuration and expansion has never been so powerful. If you're looking to find your way into Unify products, the easiest way may be to start with your Wi-Fi network, but the examples that I'm about to show you apply to all Unify products. We're gonna start with networking and a couple of switches and access points. Unify can be used from basic home networking equipment to medium-sized infrastructure for companies with a few thousand clients with no problem. And what's very interesting is that there is a wide variety of pretty capable hardware available, some of which we've tested and used in real-life environments with great experiences to tell. The first important aspect to consider is that Unify networks are centralized in terms of management, and they are also unified considering that you centralize management of wired and wireless components of your network and even other type of devices such as ID, cameras, and voice over IP. Many technical considerations and opinions have arisen from the use and widespread adoption of such networks. The important thing, if you're planning to implement a unified network, is that management and scalability was never easier. If you're planning on growing in terms of number of devices to install, the first thing that you will need to have in your network is a network infrastructure controller, which will be the heart of any Unify infrastructure. For this, currently, as this changes over time, you have three alternatives. Install it on a PC, a dedicated network controller, or a gateway device by Unify that includes such service. Now renamed by Ubiquiti the network application, you can run such application in a computer running Mac, Linux or Windows. The advantages of this option is that it'll have the power of the host computer and more importantly, is free. We do not know, and this changes over time again, what Ubiquiti's plans are for the near future. We understand it's gonna be around for a while. The second option for a network controller are the famous and very practical cloud keys, which we have also tested in our workshops powered by power over ethernet switches and proven to be worth what they cost. In the case of the Cloud Key Generation 2 Plus, the difference is that it supports Unify IP cameras, which by the way are fantastic. There are devices from Unify that can act as clients as well as servers for the infrastructure that they are supporting, as they have the network application included. Among such devices, the Unify Dream Machine, the Dream Machine Pro, the Dream Machine SE, some of them being capable of managing more services such as surveillance, access control, voice over IP, and more. Once you select the device of your preference and you install the corresponding service, run the controller or network application, configure, and changes will be deployed. That's it. Depending on the unified devices that you use in your network, you'll be able to configure from this console options for VLANs, switches, aggregation, firewalls, VPNs, DPIs, threat management, and much, much more. But it is important to keep in mind that such options will only take place and be effective if you have the corresponding equipment for such task. For example, if you have enabled DPI but you don't have a unified gateway such as the Dream Machine or Dream Router, there won't be any DPI data available for you. Everything related to Wi-Fi parameters, hotspot, managing and user privilege will be available through the controller, having such configuration deployed to your entire network in no time. Again, this is one of such features that has made these unified scenarios so powerful and why they are still gaining popularity every day. That is basically how Unify works. And that is the main reason why inexperienced IT professionals may find this hardware so appealing, as advanced configuration, even though available, may be left for later. You may have already seen our videos related not only to Unify cameras, access points, switches and routers, but also some a little bit more advanced regarding security, subnetting, remote access, VPNs and more. With Unify, you may find these tasks to be very simple to deploy. Now let's go into some examples so you can understand a little better. Let's say you bought a Unify switch and that you started with a budget option such as the Unify US8 150 watts that provides power over Ethernet Plus to your devices. Then you will start your small office or powerful house networking with a Wi-Fi 6 AP such as the Unify 6 Lite and the very convenient UAP AC in-wall, which offers, by the way, a powered over Ethernet switch, 
we're gonna include the fantastic beacon, uh, which is unifies repeater of any signal of any adjacent AP. Also, let's suppose that you want guests to have restricted access to your network. The procedure will be as simple as the following. First, connect your devices to the network, power them up and run the network application. If you decide to use a cloud key or unified dream machine as your network controller, this will be the device to configure first. You can, by the way, watch our videos dedicated to such configuration. Second step, access the network application with the credentials that you create in the setup process. In this particular case, I'm showing you a PC running the service. Third, you may get pop-up messages telling that there are devices available for you to adopt. This means that those devices will now be part of your network if you decide to adopt them. Fourth step, once the adoption process ends, you may get a message or a notification that firmware updates are available. You can choose to upgrade now or at a later time. One consideration here, execute firmware updates one device at a time. This is particularly useful when upgrading your switches firmware as disconnections may take place. Finally, create a Wi-Fi network with the parameters that you prefer and apply guest restrictions. You can also assign VLANs and configure hotspots here. By the end of this step, your devices are part of a single network that will receive all the configurations and parameters that you specify in the network controller. Let's for example see how those changes trigger the replications through the network. Once you make the changes related to a specific device, provisioning takes place only in the devices needing such changes. Let's go for instance to another example. Two different networks for two access points. The only thing that will differ from the previous steps is that you're gonna access the controller, go to the Wi-Fi settings, create a new Wi-Fi with the parameters that you need, and before saving, click Advanced, create a new group of access points, and specify the APs that belong to such group. Repeat then the same process of creating another Wi-Fi network and creating another group for which you select the apps that are members of that second group. Save and devices will provision the information that you just entered here. You can even limit the speed at which Wi-Fi users connect to the network, creating a bandwidth profile in advanced features. This will let you use restrictions in terms of bandwidth and more for your clients or even to a specific clients once they have connected. Important to note here is that it doesn't matter if you have just a couple access points or if your infrastructure includes 100 APs. For you, it'll take the same time to configure or to re-secure your Wi-Fi, assign a VLAN, or restrict a user's internet access. Can I buy Unify access points to make a very simple setup with just one or two APs? Of course, and you can even use the Android or iOS app for a very quick setup of your devices without ever needing the network controller. This, of course, will not be the case if you want to create a hotspot for your network clients as the network controller plays a very important role. Basically, all settings and configurations work the same way. If you wish to take a look at how to create VLANs, network segments, VPNs, link aggregation, and more, check our videos at youtube.com slash technology moments. You incredibly support us by subscribing and liking this video and, of course, sharing it with the people that you might want to learn about this. Thanks for watching and see you next time.